so hello a very good morning everyone uh, or a good afternoon depending on where you are joining us from welcome to today's webinar uh, where we are we are going to be discussing the live installation and commissioning of the Fronius Gen 24 inverter so um, in this webinar session <clears throat> I'm joined by my colleagues uh, Cyprian Okolo and uh, Christoph, and I'll be giving them each an opportunity to introduce themselves. So, uh, Cyprian and Christoph, if you could kindly turn on your webcams so that our attendees can see you as well. Yeah, I take the opportunity to start here. I also want to say hello and welcome to this joint webinar from Fronius International on my behalf and my colleagues here in the African region. So thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. And yeah, so I will do the second part of this webinar today where I want to guide you through a very special video we have prepared. Uh, but I think uh, David and uh, Cyprian, they will discuss about this uh, in a second then. Yeah. yeah, and I will hand over to you, Cyprian. Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> greetings uh, to everyone, all the attendees. It's a pleasure having you around. Uh, my name is Cyprian Okolo, uh, the Technical Sales Advisor for Western Africa. So it's a pleasure to be here to uh, be presenting this webinar. Um, I will be taking on the first part of the webinar and then handing over to Christoph, who is going to take us on a uh, uh, demonstrative part of uh, the webinar. So it's indeed a pleasure and uh, sit back, relax, and I uh, hope you all enjoy this presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So, um, just also to introduce myself quickly, I'm David Mwangi, the technical sales advisor taking care of the East African region. And I'll be pretty much today in the chat support answering all your questions. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to post them through. And also at the very end of the webinar, we are going to have a quick uh, question and answer session, depending on if we have some pressing questions that we need to address today. So thank you very much and welcome. And also I would like to quickly apologize because we anticipated to have a live uh, demonstration today for the webinar installation and commissioning of the Gen24 Plus. But because of some unforeseen technical challenges, we are not going to be doing that. But like already mentioned by Chris, we are going to have a very well detailed video session where he's going to take you through uh, a very well guided uh, installation process of the Gen24. So uh, just quickly to introduce you to our agenda for today, we are going to be looking at uh, briefly the introduction part of the Gen24 Plus series. And then we go into the technical aspects of the installation and commissioning procedure. And then this will be handled by uh, Cyprian. After that, uh, Christoph, of course, will take over and do the demonstration for the installation and commissioning. And after that, we are going to be giving you further information related to the Gen24 and overall other Fronius products. So welcome, and we do wish you a very enjoyable and successful webinar. So uh, Cyprian, I'll be handing over the presenter rights to you now. Okay. Great. So I believe uh, we can all see my screen now. Yes. So let's uh, continue without further ado. So uh, I'll be taking us through sort of, um, let's say, theoretical aspect of um, uh, the Gen 24, something I believe most of us are all used to, but just uh, something like a recap before we now delve into uh, Christoph's part. So uh, we all know that the, okay, for those that don't know, that the Gen 24 Plus is a uniquely versatile inverter, uh, uh, basically comprised of two categories. That is the single phase, which we preferably or uh, generically uh, term the primal, and then three phase, which we also generically term the SIMO. So PRIMO is single phase, SIMO is three phase. And then, um, yeah, the power classes for these inverters are three to six kilowatts for the PRIMO, and then three to 10 kilowatts for the SIMOs. Um, each of them having two MPPTs and one battery input. 
So um, the various um, areas where we can actually uh, apply or use this in batter, which is uniquely versatile in terms of energy management, it is there to help us with the help of, uh, of, of with the application of the smart meter in uh, doing our load profile analysis, load management, and of course, uh, maximizing self-consumption. Uh, when it comes to um, uh, operation, it is both uh, PV inverter and uh, battery inverter or battery connectable inverter, which is why it's called a hybrid inverter. So meaning that with or without battery, you can actually use this. Uh, it will give us a brief or just um, a slight insight into its usage without a uh, battery. So in terms of battery connection, we are compatible with the BYD battery box, the premium version, HVS and uh, HVM. It's easy to retrofit, increases self-sufficiency, and of course, we can uh, get power up to nine kilowatts, which is indeed a very, very good uh, figure. And uh, in terms of this uh, power, we're talking about uh, discharging and charging uh, power which is quite unique. So uh, of course, uh, with the use of uh, own pilot, which can easily be integrated into the system, you can generate hot water through the Fronius own pilot. Of course, uh, this is uh, actuated or uh, achieved by um, um, conveniently using a surplus power to uh, generate hot water by supplying a heating rod with uh, power. Of course, this uh, implies that we can now uh, generate efficient storage uh, solution. So um, I will now uh, delve into some theoretical part of the installation and commissioning. So uh, to do this, I will use our solar configurator, the app or the application uh, that uh, is free of charge that can be used to easily uh, design and dimension our systems. So if you simply log into or uh, Go to your web browser and type solar configurator, Fronia solar configurator. It will, of course, take you to the landing page where you can easily dimension your system. So to start with, I will deal with the first part, which has to do with the PV module. So in this case, uh, all you need to do is to select a particular manufacturer. Let me use my pointer at this point. Great. So you can now select your manufacturer and then uh, go through the specifications because they'll have uh, different products in display. So you can now select the product you want to use and then um, proceed to the inverter, uh, inverter uh, section where you now select your uh, country of installation, select the inverter series and uh, specify the particular inverter you want to use. And then, um, yeah, so in this case, this is where you now make all your other general settings, which importantly includes your battery uh, capacity selection. Of course, you have to eventually include your annual power consumption uh, and then, of course, uh, your load profile. Load profile here, as you can see, it's a uh, family. Uh, there are actually two load profiles, family and employed. So with family, it uh, implies that this is um, a load profile profile that uh, entails the usage of uh, uh, power or PV power uh, throughout the day. Then employed simply implies that uh, uh, there's virtually no one at home. Your owner goes to work and come back, comes back in the evening to use uh, power. So in this case, it would imply that the person, will, uh, this family or this client would need uh, extra backup power. So this now gives you an idea of uh, the capacity of the battery that you can use. So in this case, uh, there is a general rule of uh, thumb that um, in terms of the inverter capacity to the battery capacity, it's uh, usually uh, 1.2, 1.2 in terms of uh, the battery capacity to the inverter. So if it's a case of, um, um, let's say you use you use more power during the night time, then that means you have to increase your battery capacity. So it's usually 1.5. But then, of course, you're free to um, add up or uh, increase your battery capacity, just depending on your usage uh, when it is needed. So with this few information, you can easily configure your system, get uh, the number of PV modules that will be required per MPPT, as can be seen. We can also see uh, where we can set the module temperature uh, for this range is minus 10 to uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. We can see the Fahrenheit equivalent. So, and uh, the inverter ratio can also be set here, which is uh, the 
ratio of the PV to the inverter. So uh, with this, you can easily configure your system. Then going further, I talked about uh, the, the BYD uh, compatibility. So as you can see, this just gives us um, a summary of uh, the combination that can be done with the BYD battery box premium HVS and HVM. For the HVS, we will need a minimum combination of uh, two modules uh, to give us 5.1 because one module has a capacity of about 2.56 kilowatt hour. So uh, to connect an HVS, you will need a minimum uh, battery module of uh, a two minimum battery module. So and you can now ramp it up up to uh, uh, five. Yes. So with this, uh, you can uh, have as much as the 12.8 kilowatt hour. And uh, interestingly, this can of course be paralleled into uh, into three towers. So you can have three towers connected in parallel, as you can see. So that's for the HVS. For the HVM, uh, it starts from uh, three minimum of three uh, module modules. Uh, each module is about a 2.76 kilowatt hour, and of course can be ramped up up to uh, uh, eight module, and uh, to give us 22. 0.1 kilowatt hour. Of course, this can also be paralleled into uh, onto three towers, so you can have three towers of 22.1 uh, kilowatt hour. That might giving us about 66, yeah, 66.4 kilowatt hour, which is uh, a good one. So, um, in terms of the connectability with the, uh, the uh, inverter, the Gen 24 Plus inverters, we can now see the combination matrix. So, for the Primo Gen 24 Plus, it is um, connectable, you can have uh, 5.1 up to 7.7. .7. That is with the primal connecting or connecting it with the premium uh, BYD HVS. And in terms of the SIMO with the HVS, you can have from 5.1 up to 10.2 uh, kilowatt hour connectable. That's for the HVS. For the HVM, it's from 11.0 to 19.3 kilowatt hour, and then for the SIMO, that's for the primal, then for the SIMO, it's from 11 to 22.1. So that's um, a brief of the combination matrix with the BYD. So in terms of uh, the installation, uh, immediately you open the, the, the box, the inverter box, uh, you're going to see a quick start guide, which is, you can see here, illustrated. So in this quick start guide, you're going to get all the necessary information you need for your installation, starting from how to install your wall mount bracket, uh, how to clip in or snap in the inverter, how to open the vacuum cover where you can now access the connection area, and then of course, how to connect your cable to the Vega flaps. Yeah, so we now have a, a closer view of how this looks like. Uh, you have your DC connection area. So here is where you connect your um, modules, module cables come in here, and of course your battery cables also come in here. And then um, this will, let me see if I can have a quick zoom here, great. So as you can see, um, then next to it is uh, the, uh, the pilot. The pilot basically is the, the communication gateway or interface of the Gen24 inverter. So connected to it, you have uh, three orange uh, terminals here. So one, the first one here is the WSD, which is a white shutdown. It's a special, it has a special function which uh, will be treated in subsequent um, webinars. Then the mode bus, which, is, which plays a very, very important role in, the, in terms of um, communication and load management. This is where you connect your smart meter, your smart meter and your battery, the communication uh, cables. And then you have your input and output uh, uh, port where you can conveniently do your load management. Uh, next to it is the ground, the ground, yes, the ground uh, terminal block. And then, of course, you now have uh, your TV points, which we prefer to call the opportunity power, as you can see here, illustrated with uh, um, uh, labeled as OP. Uh, yeah, this is where, as I told you earlier, you can actually use uh, PV power even without a battery. It is also covered in a uh, subsequent uh, webinar. So just stay tuned for that. And then of course, you now have your AC connection area where you connect your AC cables. As you can see in this case, we're dealing with a SIMO because we have three 
um, three uh, bases here, that's L1, L2, and L3. If it were primal, you only have L1, the neutral, and the Earth. Great. So, having said that, I'll just um, um, play a video that should uh, illustrate how this is done. This place. Okay, so um, seems like we're having issues to play in the video. So we'll just uh, go ahead with the next slide. Yeah, these things happen sometimes. <laughs> okay, so um, here this uh, shows us uh, the communication wiring for the Kronos smart meter and the BYD battery. So we need to pay uh, attention here because this uh, gives us um, a well-detailed view how to connect our smart meter and the uh, BYD battery box to the pilot. So starting off with the smart meter, we can see that uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. You connect terminal eight, terminal eight, nine, and ten to um, the mode bus. And uh, to uh, lay a bit emphasis on this, on our mode bus terminal, we have two mode bus uh, mode bus ports. So we have mode bus one and mode bus, mode bus zero and mode bus one. So in this case, uh, for this illustration, you can see that mode bus zero is the one implemented. So that's the one connected to the smart meter. And uh, as you can see, terminals eight, nine, and 10 implemented to connect to MO negative and MO positive, or D plus or D minus, as some of us will understand it. Uh, for some installers, it, they know it as A and B. So whatever it is, but this is how you connect it and then ensure that you uh, implement the 120 ohms terminal jumper uh, resistor. Uh, this serves as a connection loop between the communication uh, terminals. So it has to be activated. If not, there won't be any communication between the two devices. So in order to activate this, in our previous series of uh, smart meters, you normally have to physically connect uh, 120 ohms resistor. But in this case, we have integrated it in our new smart meter. So all you need to do to activate it is to loop terminal seven and nine, as can be seen in this case, and illustrated here. And then on the other end of the inverter, all you need to do is to turn on the uh, the this deep switch here, uh, giving us a closer look at that. So as you can see, this is mode bus zero, and then the switch is should be on one. If we're going to use mode bus one, uh, we'll have to turn on the switch. So ensure that you turn on the switch because that is what will activate the integrated 120 ohm resistor on the, uh, on the pilots of the Gen 24 uh, inverter. So that's it for the connection of uh, the smart meter. Of course, you have to connect the power cables. And then uh, for the connection of the BYD battery, it's also illustrated here. So in this case, you need a twisted uh, cable pair and um, of course connecting to mode bus uh, if we're using this critically it will have to be mode bus one but this is a uh, an excerpt uh, for you to use so it's just uh, for you to be directed on how to connect it so basically you connect eight and seven to mo uh, positive and uh, negative in this case m1 positive and negative for this particular example since uh, m0 have been impl implemented to connect a smart meter so, and then of course you connect your positive cable and your ground cable, and of course connect your shield. So that's how you connect the Fronius uh, um, Gen 24 inverter to the BYD battery. Then afterwards, uh, of course, you can now go on with the commissioning. So commissioning can either be done via a, a newly, launched, uh, newly uh, launched app, which is the Fronius Solar Start, which was launched a couple of months ago. So with this, uh, all you need is uh, to go through three easy steps and then you're done with the commissioning. So how can this be done? First of all, you have to activate the Wi-Fi access point on the inverter device. It's happening uh, on the infrared sensor in between the two LEDs. Once you do that, just tap it once, you now open the access point, And then um, of course you can now easily connect with your smart device after downloading the Fronius Solar Start app, which is downloadable on your app store. Once you do that, you um, uh, have uh, a, a, a 
series of uh, info, very informative pages that will guide you through this through the commissioning process. It can also be done via a web browser. So all you need to do is also to open the Wi-Fi access point by simply tapping on the center button, and then uh, of course connect to the inverter network. You're going to see it uh, pop up on your network uh, internet uh, bar. Uh, input the password one two three four five six seven eight, and then on your uh, internet browser, preferably Chrome, uh, enter the IP address as you can see here, and then that will automatically open the installation wizard and guide you through the three processes of uh, commissioning. So the three processes basically include the network connection, product uh, setup, and of course, uh, solar web connection. Like I said, this can be done via Wi-Fi connection. That's on your web browser. It can also be done hardwired by using your LAN ports or internet connection, as, as you want to call it. So please, we pre recommend that you use LAN 1 during this connection. In this case, you don't need any uh, password. No password is necessary. So all you need to do is to enter on your web browser uh, this IP address. And once you enter it, the, uh, the installation wizard will be opened. And then you can now continue with the respective process of uh, commissioning. It's quite a straightforward process. So, um, like I said, it's just a, a quick rundown of uh, installation and commissioning. So now I will be handing over to Christoph Schellinger, who will now be taking us through the demonstrative part of the presentation. So Christoph, you can, uh, yeah, so you can now uh, take over from this point. Perfect, Cyprian. Exactly. Thank you very much. Before I start uh, with the video itself, I quickly want to talk uh, if, just in a few words about why we have done this video and are there more videos like this uh, expected. So uh, just to give you a few informations, this kind of video, it's about 50 minutes long. It's uh, in our new training. It's one of our new trainings formats. So previously, we've only done face-to-face -face trainings in Wells in our headquarter in Austria and webinars, like you also uh, maybe know from David and uh, my, my colleague Cyprian. So they also do webinars like this um, periodically. But now we want to switch to a, also a new trainings format, the so-called online training because of the pandemic situation, but also because of the whole digitalization that's going on in the world, we want to jump on this train. And that's the reason why in, why we invested, we at Tronius International, invested in a high quality camera equipment and uh, do such videos. And this is basically a short version of the face-to-face -face training. It's usually about one to two hours long. And in this case, it's one segment of our Gen24 installation video, so our online training. So here we really do use multiple camera angles to show you exactly uh, what components do we need and how does the com component look like, how does the installation process look like. And the reason why we do this is actually uh, to allow more people to, to get, get in contact with more people and to allow more people who are interested in those contents to see this, to watch this. So even if there is a travel ban because of the COVID situation, or if it's simply too far away for you, maybe in the future you will be then interested to watch one of our online trainings. So because of this, we are also, of course, in close contact with our colleagues, also with David and uh, Cyprian. So maybe in the future, we can also set up such a situation also in our subsidiaries, but uh, yeah, in small steps. Yeah, so um, don't be alarmed. During the video, I will stop occasionally on a few points to give you more additional information on a few topics. Uh, so maybe don't be alarmed because the point where I stop the video and the point where the video stops at your place can be a little bit different depending on the internet speed. Uh, yeah, but without further ado, I would say we start now and yeah, have fun and enjoy. So first part, Fronius Gen24 Plus. Uh, you can see here our training wall. Uh, we have built up today the setup with our Fronius Primer Gen24 Plus, our 
uniquely versatile one-phase hybrid inverter which will hit the market very very soon. And on the right side uh, the Fronius Simo that means uh, out of the snap inverter range uh, we will then uh, point out at the later stage. Okay coming to the hard facts of the Fronius Gen 24 Plus series uh, so basically we have got um, two different products that means we have got a three phase hybrid inverter successfully launched already in uh, 2020 that's the Fronius Simo Gen 24 Plus which is available in the power classes 6, 8 and 10 kilowatts AC output power. The Simogen 24 Plus is equipped with two MPPT inputs, that means uh, one uh, with 25 amps and the other one with 12.5 uh, amps. And we've got one separate battery input with 22 amps. Okay, then big news for you today. Uh, we will expand our existing uh, product portfolio of the Fronius Simogen 24 Plus. It means it will be very, very soon available in the power classes 3 to 5 uh, kilowatts. That means smaller power classes. Also, uh, we are completing their, our product portfolio in these smaller power classes. Please keep in mind there are little differences uh, when it comes to the MPPT inputs and the currents. So um, with the small Simo Gen 24 Plus devices, uh, we have for each MPPT input 12.5 amps and uh, also one battery input is limited with 12.5 amps. Uh, also, it's a smaller housing, that means the Simo Gen 24 Plus 6 to 10 kilowatts is in the big housing and the Simo Gen 24 Plus 3 to 5 kilowatts is in the small housing. Okay, and also one thing which, which is important about that is um, the PV point. Uh, we will demonstrate this today uh, a little bit more precisely. This is also 100% free of charge on board uh, with the Simo Gen 24 3 to 5 kilowatt plus devices. Okay, and then uh, I will come to the major part for today, the Fronius Primo Gen 24 plus. So we have built up in our academy for today the Primo Gen 24 Plus, our one-phase hybrid inverter solution out of this Gen 24 Plus uh, inverter series. And um, hard facts about this is power classes 3 to 6 kilowatts. Uh, again, two MPPT inputs with 22 amps and 12 amps and also one separate battery input with 22 amps. It will be available very, very soon. So starting from calendar week 12, 2021, depending on different countries, um, we will uh, start launching uh, globally our Fronius Primer Chain 24 Plus devices. Okay, so much to the hard facts of the product. Uh, and then uh, I would say directly coming into the point, uh, uh, the hands-on part, I would say, professional installation of Fronius Gen 24 Plus devices, which I will highlight uh, now. Uh, basically, uh, installation process with Fronius is very, very easy. So the only toolkit you might use or you need is a Torx T20 screwdriver. You can see it here, uh, I have one here. Um, you need the quick start guide, so every inverter which leaves our factory uh, is equipped with this quick start guide, so it's that's an inlet uh, in the packaging, a package insert, and you need your one mobile device, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, or uh, a computer, a laptop, 
um, with our Fronius Solar.Start app. So that's our overall uh, installation commissioning app uh, with which you can uh, do the initial commissioning of all our Fronius inverter solutions. Okay, so please be sure to have these three things uh, with yourself when uh, working with Fronius and uh, coming right now to the first, to the installation instructions. So how is the basic principle of the inverter? So the inverter is kind of uh, mounted on the wall regularly. Uh, you can see here um, in our trainings wall and behind those, um, those on the wall, there is a wall bracket. That means uh, you can install our inverter indoor and outdoor. Uh, that's possible. Please keep in mind the temperature range, which is for the primary inverters uh, mi minus 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, there's a little bit of differentiation between the SIMA. The SIMA is minus 25 uh, degrees Celsius to a max of 60 degrees Celsius. Um, the permitted humidity, we are not limited on that. That means uh, you can expose it to zero to 100% permitted humidity. And uh, yes, I think that's more or less um, the basic things you have to consider. One thing uh, I've got here is the lightweight wall bracket. You can see here, that's the example of the Fronius Primer Gen 24 Plus. So you just have to uh, screw it uh, onto the wall uh, with at least four screws and then uh, just snap in, hook in um, the whole inverter uh, until you hear uh, a click. That means that's the acoustic feedback more or less, that it fits properly and then the installation process is more or less done. So uh, you can then directly start with the wiring inside the inverter. So you see no big deal at all. I think that's uh, self-explanatory to the greatest extent. Okay, um, that's important. Another thing which I want to highlight is our active cooling um, technology. That means for the Gen24 Plus series, we have got an optimized thermal concept. It means that's our active cooling. We are re relying on active cooling uh, here at Fronius. So we directly suck in the ambient air on the front side of the radiator and we uh, have got a consistent removal of the excess heat on the sides of the inverter. Therefore, please be sure that this system works uh, with the exact clearance. Uh, if you, for example, uh, install the, uh, the Gen24 Plus devices uh, close to, I don't know, whatever. Um, you should please keep in mind the exact clearances uh, that this active uh, cooling concept works. And also the ventilation slots should remain unobstructed. That means um, that there is no dirt uh, or uh, anything else. Uh, which is uh, clocking the, the So it's time now for a short additional information session on my side. I uh, hope you can uh, hear me well. Uh, on that point, on the active cooling system, I quickly want to add, Sandro, my colleague in the video, already mentioned the environment where we can install the Gen24 inverters pretty much everywhere in and outdoor, no problem. It's even uh, rain resistant, so uh, we can even install it underneath the modules, for example, on site. But one thing that's very important is to keep it in the shade. So uh, we can install it outdoors, but if we do so, we need to make sure that there is no way that there gets direct sunlight onto the inverter for a longer time so that it can heat up. So the only problem would be, of course, the heat problematic if we had direct sunlight onto the inverter. So this is a, a big topic. And yeah, this is one 
one thing we always need to make sure to keep in mind. And also regarding the active cooling, uh, we can install it also in a dusty area because of this active cooling concept with the central positioned fan. It usually blows out everything that gets that gets into the system. But if it's a very dusty and sticky kind of environment, uh, it might be possible to come regularly in, I don't know, two years, uh, for example, and uh, every two years to blow out the whole channel so that the heat uh, distribution is functional. So this is also one hint I just want to give you depending on where you want to install the inverter. Okay, so let's proceed with the video. The thermal concept. Maybe I can show it to you. Uh, I just need my screwdriver. Uh, we have got on the front side 180 degrees fast locking screws. Uh, I just quickly unlock them. And then uh, also on the front side, the DC disconnector. Uh, we just have to position this DC disconnector switch on zero position. That's important. Uh, otherwise, uh, it wouldn't be able, uh, or you wouldn't be able to remove the cover at all. Uh, that's uh, what I have done already. Uh, and now we look at this beautiful Gen24 Plus device. Uh, we can see here. Uh, so you can see now uh, in real life application this uh, this heat sink, uh, this very prominent heat sink, and also the radiator on the front side. Uh, that's the basic concept. Um, and uh, yes, which is of course an improvement to the snap inverter. Uh, and as I say I can say this also uh, very very prominent and. Uh, yes, uh, working pretty, pretty good. Okay, uh, so much to the, to the cooling uh, concept. And now directly go one step ahead with the cabling. So that would be uh, exactly the next cover uh, I have to remove, uh, which would be the DATCOM cover. You can see here, uh, again, we have this uh, this fast locking screws, this 180 degrees fast locking screws uh, five times. Uh, I just unlock it and I have with in very, very little time, I have the full access to the inverter. That means uh, that's the that come cover uh, again. And then you can see it here we are directly at the cable connections of the Fronus Primer Gen 24 Plus. So basically, uh, very, very roughly said, on the left side, we have got all the DC terminals. That means uh, we have got DC plus and DC minus uh, and the battery inputs. In the middle, there is the data communication interface. That's the pilot, uh, so it's called and on the right side, that's the AC terminal. That means um, they are got, we have got the, the, the mains connection here uh, and also a separate plug, which is this PB point uh, I triggered before, uh, which is a, an own exit uh, on the AC terminal, uh, our basic backup power function. That's important. Maybe also to these clamps, uh, I want to demonstrate you quickly. So these are um, push-in um, spring clamps, you can see here. So you just have to open it, uh, very, very easy. And then just put in the cable. You do not need cable locks or, or something like that. So uh, no cramping necessary, you can directly connect the cable to the Gen24 Plus device, then close it again and of course edit, put it again in the, in the Gen24 Plus device. That's would say very, very important. Coming back to the slides, here you see it once again. Um, I think uh, that's it basically. 
One thing maybe I didn't mention before is the grounding terminal block, block um, that sits um, behind the, the AC ports, uh, AC terminals, and therefore you can um, do internal functional grounding of the inverter and maybe also grounding of an SPD. If you have got the requirement to integrate an SPD, you can also do the functional grounding. So it's time for another short, very, uh, very short additional information session. So my colleague just mentioned that there is the possibility to connect the grounding cable, for example, of a surge protection device within the Gen24 inverter on this grounding terminal block. I quickly want to add two things. There is also the opportunity to integrate an SPD option within the inverter. So like we can see here in this picture, below the DC connection compartment, below those two terminals for plus and minus on the DC side, we can insert a Fronius, uh, a Fronius designed SPD solution. This is actually a print version where the SPDs are soldered onto a, a print board and this can then mount it via four screws within the device. So there is no need for an external box. And then we can also connect it uh, grounding terminal wise in the device. And the second part I also want to mention was with the spring clamps that my colleague Sandro already mentioned. So I really love this feature because it's a very fast way to install the device on the customers on the customer site. But there is another very cool feature when you think about the service procedure. Imagine you have to undo the whole inverter to exchange it for, for the repaired one. Uh, it's very easy also with this uh, with the spring clamps to undo them. So you don't have to unscrew the cables. You don't have to undo the cables from the inverter. It's just a simple click and you are done. So it's a very fast way. And also within this webinar at the end, we will see how the service process looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead. Which cable cross sections are allowed? I think this is also very important for you. So um, principally uh, on the connection area, AC and DC sided, we say up to maximum of 10 square millimeters and the grounding terminal block is up to a max of 16 square millimeters possible. For the data communication, we recommend you to just use a common CAT5 uh, LAN cable shielded twisted pair uh, with up to a max of 1.5 square millimeters for Modbus uh, IO configuration or for example for this VSD uh, we will define later on. For the system design I think that is also I think very essential. Uh, we have got a very very low DC input voltage range starting from the Simo Gen 24 plus from 80 volts uh, for the Primo Gen 24 plus it's 65 volts that means with I would say around about three modules you can start up the inverter and it starts working uh, so um, that's uh, I would say also a key benefit of the uh, Gen 24 plus series. The maximum input voltage range please also keep this in this in mind for the string lengths uh, for the Simo Gen 24 plus we've got a maximum of 1000 volts with the Primo Gen 24 plus which we have got here uh, we are limited uh, to 600 volts that means uh, in addition there is I would say a, a small cardboard also integrated you saw it before in the presentation uh, please do not um, do not uh, make two long strings and add it to the primer chain 24 plus please also keep this in mind because that could cause an severe damage and there is no warranty for that uh, so system design uh, is a key topic uh, and therefore if you are not sure uh, with your current modules or your current inverter if you for example working first time with Fronius then I can refer you to the Fronius Solar Configurator 4.0. That's a free online tool. 
where you can, can design and dimension your PV installation. Uh, just give it a try. It's a free online tool. Uh, every module or nearly all modules are integrated. If your specific module is not integrated, you can enter it yourself. And choose the inverter of Fronius and then start the configuration and you are on the safe side um, so nothing um, can happen to you uh, and uh, this is our clear Fronius recommendation. So one quick stop again. I quickly want to add one small thing about the system design here and also one technical information for you. Uh, so my colleague Sandro mentioned the differences between those products when it comes to the input voltage range, 80 volts to 1000 and 65 to 600 volts on the Primo. It's a little bit different. And uh, also there is one same uh, technical number on both devices and this is the startup voltage. The startup voltage is really the minimum required DC voltage in the morning when the sun rises to start the whole process, to start the inverter with the feed-in process. And this startup voltage is the same for both devices, Simo and Primo, Gen 24, and it's 80 volts. So it has to reach this limit once a day uh, in the startup process, and then it can track down and up the whole range that we have. So for the primal, it needs to reach 80 volts and then it can track down to 65 and upwards to the 600 volts, for example. So just one uh, technical information, a hint for you to remember. And also there is a difference if it's just simply the on-grid mode or if we talk about the backup scenario. The backup scenario is when the inverter uses the battery, for example, that is connected to power up the system if the grid is gone or if it needs to power up the PV point if the grid is gone. These are our two backup scenarios we can have. And in such a backup scenario, it needs a little bit more power, not the 80 volts, but 150 volts. So it needs a little bit more power because there is no supply from the AC side Maybe one can remember it like that. And because there is no supply from the AC grid, we need a little bit higher power from the DC side to start up the system. So 80 volts in an on-grid system, in a normal procedure, and 150 volts in our backup scenario for the PV point or for the full backup. Okay, so let's proceed with the video. Okay, then, and coming to the next point, I would say the cent another central part for today, uh, which is the data communication uh, of the Gen24 Plus device. So as I've already mentioned before, uh, we have got a new data communication interface. That's the pilot. Um, it's standardized, integrated in all Gen24 Plus devices. So um, it uh, sits in the middle of the inverter and I will now clearly define to you uh, what these plugs and switches uh, are all about of the pilot. Coming to the presentation, you see it here. Uh, we have got multiple open interfaces. So the pilot is, I would say, uh, our di direct connection communication point. So it's a data logger, it's a web server, it visualizes you state codes. So this is really more or less the brain of the whole inverter. What open interfaces do we offer here at Fronios? So we have got two Ethernet and LAN ports. We support a common communication protocols like Modbus DCP and the SunSpec Alliance or the Solar API JSON protocol. These are all supported by the, by the Fronius Gen24 Plus. What is also new compared to the Fronius Snap Inverter is our uh, two Modbus interfaces. So we have got Modbus RS485 communication and now with this pilot we have got a Modbus 0 and a Modbus 1 interface which of course gives you more flexibility uh, with connecting to for example battery um, 
to a smart meter to from his own pilot, whatever, uh, you are more flexible. We have also got a VSD function, that's the bridged one. You can see here the smallest plug of all three, and that's a wired shutdown uh, safety uh, instrument, which you can also use if it's required for your country. Coming into detail about Modbus, uh, so that's effectively the plug in the middle. Uh, the central plug is the Modbus plug. Like mentioned before, Modbus 0, Modbus 1, two uh, interfaces uh, where you can communicate to other Modbus members. And it means, uh, I mentioned it before, it can be the battery, for example, the BYD battery box premium HVS and HVM. Uh, communicates via Modbus, the Fronius smart meter is a Modbus meter and also the own pilot can um, be connected via Modbus. So um, we are really, really flexible with these two Modbus interfaces and can uh, really uh, make uh, an really advanced system realization. Um, then you see it here uh, again, important is the dip switches. So these are really, really little. Uh, these white dip switches at the top of the plug, uh, you maybe can see it here. It's uh, zero and one dip switch. These are the termination resistances. So please keep in mind all the time at the end of this um, Modbus communication lines, you have to terminate it correctly. The wired shutdown is the next one. Uh, so again, it's a safety mechanism. It's bridged X factory. So just please keep in mind um, that this is a safety function. You can realize that. And so uh, also keep in mind that this bridge, you do not remove it because if you remove this bridge, uh, nothing works anymore. So that's really an optical signal. Uh, you can activate it as well. Um, and the inverter shuts down in, I don't know, a very, very little time, very milliseconds. Um, in some countries, this is required. We already implemented it on the pilot standard uh, test if it's, uh, I would say, uh, required in your. So. One quick information again from my side regarding this WSD function. I'm no expert when it comes to local requirements, especially for your region. But if you if you have those requirements to have an emergency switch, for example, at the house entrance to turn off the whole system, uh, the whole photovoltaic system with one button, uh, this would for example, be a solution for that. I know that this requirement is uh, in place for some countries, for some regions, uh, but I'm no expert in your region. So uh, if you are interested, you would have to uh, put out this bridge that we can see here, this cable. And uh, from the emergency switch at our entrance, we would have to then run a two pole cable to our pilot, to this segment where we just recently pulled out this the bridge. And as soon as we hit then this emergency button, we would open the loop. And Sandra already explained the whole system, the inverter would shut down on the AC side immediately. It's a few milliseconds. It's really fast because it's more or less a mechanical opening of the AC relays within the inverter. So it's really a fast way to then by one push shut down the whole system on the AC side. But please keep in mind that it's not a solution when the requirement goes for the DC side to switch off the DC. It's really just to switch it off AC sidewise uh, for the DC side, it would be another solution. So just to give you a heads up uh, or an application example, how this could look like. Country. And the next uh, thing is, uh, or the last thing for the data communication so far is the digital I.O. plug. So that's the part here, the biggest plug. You can also all the time remove those plugs and that you can do not have to uh, be, remove the, the entire pilot, 
just remove this plug uh, to the correct wiring and then plug it in again. The digital IOs, uh, principally we have got um, four digital IOs and six digital inputs, uh, which are uh, functionable at the moment. So you can, these are 12 volts DC 6 watt signals. You can realize um, intelligent load management, uh, IO mapping and so on. Uh, for example, for a pool pump, for an air con, for charging of EV stations, uh, whether uh, big any big loads can be uh, kind of managed by these digital IOs. Also, when you think about doing backup power, that means uh, we are capable of real free phase backup power with our Fronish Gen 24 Plus devices. Um, then you can also, then you are in need of these digital IOs uh, where you have to do this uh, automatic configuration of uh, grid separation and grid redetection and reconnection. Okay. I think this was it so far uh, for the data communication and the whole concept of the Gen24 Plus device. Um, I think um, the next thing uh, I want to quickly highlight is the, is the Fronius Smart Meter. So uh, I just want uh, to quickly uh, go into this topic now because that is also essential and crucial for any load management, for any um, system thinking, sector integration. Uh, the inverter is in need uh, of the Fronius Smart Meter at the feeding point. What is the Fronius Smart Meter? Basically, it's a Modbus meter I mentioned before, a bidirectional energy meter, so it measures the consumption uh, from the grid and also the feed in into the grid. So the energy flows which happen at the feed in point, whether it comes from the grid or it goes into the, the grid. That's uh, basically the information which our inverter needs. Uh, for example, for battery, uh, for own pilot, for load management, this is a crucial information we are needing. Um, Principally, you have also many, many advantages when you do a visualization in front of your solar web. So, because uh, we can then make differentiations between the energy flows and this brings also a lot of benefits to you. Um, yes, and for uh, overall controlling of the energy flows. Um, so basically, we recommend you for every Fronius installation, whether it's a Gen24 Plus device or it's a snap inverter, please always install the Fronius Smart Meter at the feed-in point um, as standard. What are the, the typologies? Uh, basically, we have got a one-phase meter for one-phase markets. Uh, I have got here the three-phase one uh, I showed you before. Uh, it's the 65 amps three-phase meter. Uh, and also a 5 kilo amps free phase meter uh, for commercial use. That means that is uh, important with external CTs. For the wiring, uh, I have also put it into the presentation. You need, of course, Modbus communication, uh, Modbus plus, Modbus minus and ground. Uh, and uh, the correct wiring on the smart meter is also assigned here uh, at the side. You see, depending on whether it's uh, a one-phase meter or a three-phase meter, um, that's important. Yes, and uh, again for the three-phase meter, the central point is again at the pilot uh, with the Modbus plug in the middle and the smart meter with its communication terminal uh, at the bottom. That's important. Please keep in mind all the time the termination resistance, set it correctly. Um, that's uh, really basic and also a frequent error which happens at our tech support, which can be easily avoided 
if you just keep in mind um, those terminations. Okay, uh, that was it so far for the installation uh, process. Uh, and I think um, this is a major part uh, from the hardware side. And now how if, if which everything is done with the with the uh, software side, I will pass over the words now to my colleague Hans Pelzer, who will demonstrate you the initial commissioning uh, of the Fronius Gen 24 Plus device. Thank you a lot. So I'll show you now the initial commissioning of the Fronius Gen 24 inverters. Basically, uh, the data communication will be from the pilot to the router. There is a Wi-Fi connection or, or LAN connection to the router and then to the internet to our solar web portal. All what you need for that is your laptop or your smartphone with the Solar Start app. Basically, what you need to do on the inverter, you, if you touch the a point between the two LEDs on the front panel for approximately one second the Wi-Fi access point will be activated and with this access point we can then connect to our uh, app or to our laptop. If you do two quick pushes uh, we can also activate WPPS function or if you press longer than three seconds you can also quit the service messages if there is any service message uh, forwarded. So basically the green LED on the left hand side should uh, light up whenever the inverter is producing energy and yellow is standby, red would be an error and the right LED is the communication LED. This shows if the connection to the internet router is okay. Uh, so these are the three apps you need. Basically for the commissioning you need only the one, the Solar Start app. Of course this is the commissioning app so download that from the App Store and you can use it. Second we have also a Solar SOS app. This is our service app which you need uh, can use for troubleshooting. And the third app is the Solar Web app where you do the monitoring on your smart device. So all these three apps are free of charge. And of course, uh, for the moment, we need the Solar Start app for the commissioning. Uh, so whenever you have downloaded the app, uh, just open the Start app and follow this step-by-step uh, -step approach. And then you can uh, do the commissioning. Or the other way around is with the laptop, with your browser, and this is what I want to show you now. Basically, uh, you first uh, connect your laptop via Wi-Fi uh, to the access point. Then you enter the IP address, uh, as you see here, and then you start the installation wizard. And this is what I would like to show you now. So basically, we uh, come to the inverter and I press the button in the middle for about one second. So I just keep my, push my finger in the middle and then the red, uh, the right LED will light up a flash uh, in blue color. This shows that the inverter is in opening, has opened the access point. And the left hand uh, LED is showing standby, yellow LED showing standby, so the power module is not running. Then I will, uh, look for this inverter. I have already connected. Uh, so this is a Fronius underline the serial number of the inverter. And with this I can connect. Uh, to this I will connect with the password 12345678. Whenever I've connected I open the browser and uh, select the IP address 192 0.168, 0.250, 0.181. Uh, 
then it will take about a few seconds uh, to upload the web interface of the inverter. And you, as you can see here, we come to this uh, start window first. Um, then we have uh, three settings to do. Uh, basically, of course, we first need to switch over to English language. Um, so three steps, basically. First is the network connection. Second is the product settings. And the third is the solar web connection. We start with the network settings. I connect here and then uh, I get, uh, I need to enter the password for the customer, the customer password. So we have two passwords. One is for the network settings and the other one is for the product settings. And we'll start now with the customer settings. So I enter this password now, uh, eight characters and also numbers. I repeat that and save it. So then we are uh, again uh, at the network settings. First, I need to enter a PV system name. I will now name it as just Primo and uh, I have to select the time zone uh, and the location. Then I will go to the next. The next step are the terms and conditions. So that's, we are basically ask you to confirm that, that we uh, can send, that you send the data to our solar web portal. Then I agree that, I go to next. Next step is then the network settings. And in the network settings, I have already uh, found my Wi-Fi here in that room and I'm already also connected. So Wi-Fi is already connected. I can see here this one is the one uh, router which is already connected. So then I go to next. If of course now I would uh, need another router, I need to select that and enter the, the password and then uh, connect it. So I go to, I'll to next. A next step uh, is then the product settings. And this is now only for the te technician. So this is your password as an installer. I also enter here a password and I'll repeat it. and save it. So now we do the setup. We enter the setup, the setup, the country setup. Uh, in this case, we have selected Germany uh, with a special cosinus fee. Yeah. So you select here your country. Uh, you, you know there are many countries here uh, to be selected. Then uh, we go to next. Next step is then the device configuration. In the device configuration, we can see uh, what uh, components we want to add to the system. So basically, first of all, we add a component, the PV generator. PV generator, if we have uh, one, only one MPP tracker, I put in here, for example, 5000 watt peak nominal power of this first string. I have no second one, then I select this one. So I add this and now uh, the PV generator is already working. Now I can add another component, for example, a power meter, the Fronius smart meter or the battery. In this case, I have not connected the power meter. Usually as a uh, Sandro told us before we should do that. A battery would also be possible with the Gen24 Plus inverters. So now we have not no one of these, so we go to the next step. In the next step, we then can enter the functions. Following functions will be displayed. Uh, first of all, backup power. So I've already started backup power. 
uh, with PV point. PV point is the only one I can choose here because full backup is not possible without battery. In this case, I only have selected PV point and that's already been started. And then I can also select the load management. So these are the digital IOs from the pilot, you know, these four IOs, which can also be addressed here. And I can uh, select how many of these four uh, I need. In this case, I have only one selected, pin one, and I can go to the next step. So whenever you need load management, uh, feel free here to enter here the data and then you get a 12 volt signal out here on that pin. And the last point is the export limitation. With the export limitation, you can limit your entire system to a certain power or to a certain uh, per, a percentage uh, of uh, power, of that power. So here we have 5,000 watt. If I select 60%, then the power output will be reduced, uh, but you can still use the full 5000 watt in the house, but the feed-in power will never be more than 60% of this power. So in this case, we don't, we don't need that. And I go to next, and that's actually also the final step for the operation. Last step is the solar web uh, um, uh, con connection, which I will show you later on in the slides. I'm not able to do that here because I have no account here. So we skip that and go to the wizard again. And on the wizard, you will then see the inverter. I can also now start the inverter. What I will do, I will switch on also the DC switch. So that means the inverter will already get power, get supply. And you see also here, now at the moment, I have this uh, inverter too low DC power for feed-in because there was no power and it takes about two minutes to start up the inverter. I can also see the energy output. I can also see some advanced settings here. Uh, so about voltages and I see on the string voltage, there's already 217 volt on DC string one, MPPV tracker one. So that's uh, already good. All right, so guys, um, unfortunately we have to skip this part of the video now because we are in a overtime already, 60 minutes overtime, so we don't want to exceed much longer, but there will be also the opportunity for sure to have this video again in the future for you to be played. But right now I want to hand over to David once again. So, second all right all right so thank you so much chris for that very let's say interactive section of the demonstration so uh, like you've mentioned uh, yeah like you've mentioned uh, we are going to have this dig digital resources available for all our partners to be able to uh, learn uh, even individually so even at this point, although we are coming to the end of the demonstration part, uh, anyone who is interested to get uh, this full video, please uh, get in touch with us. But at the same time, I also would like to mention that we'll be sharing uh, this recording for this particular webinar. And uh, you'll have, uh, I think, quite good information, uh, both in the webinar uh, recording, as well as the e uh, digital resources that can be shared um, later on. So at this point, I would like to give you some further information uh, about uh, the Fronius uh, products and uh, other resources that you can use. But starting with, I would just like to highlight, uh, uh, depending on the, your regions, uh, where you can get support as far as the local support is concerned. So if you look at this uh, map of Africa here, we have uh, regions that are allocated to each of the three TSA who, TSAs who are working in Africa. So uh, my region in red, then we have a green area for Mohamed Sidat, who is not with us today. And then for West African region in blue, you get in touch with my colleague, Cyprian Okolo. 
Uh, further information, uh, we have a lot of resources as well in uh, our homepage. So you can get all the details you need regarding all our products, uh, whether user manuals or uh, other learning resources. Then on YouTube, we have a specific channel for the Sub-Saharan African region where you can get a list of all the webinars and recordings that we've done in the past. Even this one is going to be posted there. So at your own time, you can also revisit all the uh, webinars that we've conducted in the past. So further uh, contact details are shown in the screen and uh, free, feel free to get in touch with uh, us locally or also with our colleagues uh, at Fronia's international headquarters in Austria to get all the information you need on different topics. And on that, uh, we've come to the end of our webinar for today. I would like to thank my colleagues, uh, Cyprian.